Hey everybody, it's your Sam, and I'm here in Incarnate to show you how I'm going to make Nadasha's home. What I did is I have the first floor done, and what I want to show you is how we do the second floor as well. Incarnate is a web-based tool where you can build maps. It's fairly easy. They have all kinds of tips and tricks and videos that show you how to do this and needless to say I've only watched a few of them and I probably need to watch more because I am not very good at this but I sometimes need a quick visual because I just can't get it right in my head or I want to make sure that I have something that stays the same it doesn't change you know from book one to book two because I kind of forgot what it looks like or something changed in my head or whatever. Incarnate is a great way for me to do this. If you've watched any of my other videos you know that I made a world map with for I'm No Hero. I also made a country map and I also made a town map for Alamount which Alamount is Nadasha's hometown so now we're going to go a little bit closer we're going to zoom in a little bit closer and do her house what i was going to do is kind of show you from the start up how i did this but this was just perfect <laughs> that i don't really want to mess with it again so this is going to be the first floor of Chi's house as you can see it's a very small house especially with as many orphans as they have living with them. They don't even have enough chairs to house all of them around the table pretty much. So some of them do eat here in like the living room area. So as you can see whenever you enter the main door you enter right into this open floor plan kind of thing and this is the dining room kitchen area. The one thing that Incarnate does not have is like a sink thing <laughs> or a um, pump, like a water pump because Nadasha's kitchen has a basin with a water pump because they have a well and that's how they wash their dishes and uh, cook and everything is because they do actually have a water pump that's situated kind of right in here in this, this little kitchen area. They do have a couple of fireplaces on the first floor. They share a chimney, so they're back to back. Uh, this is their mainly, mainly their cooking fire. And this one is to help keep this back bedroom kind of warm. And then this living area has kind of been taken over by the kids. And it's kind of a study hall, school room. Um, Greta likes to do some of her building and things there. Uh, little Greta is actually... a probably going to be like a steampunky kind of girl <laughs> in this world so yeah she's she's a little oddity in there but yeah and this kind of is like a pile of things that they can grab as they go out the door. Daytree is a fisherman so he works on a lot of nets he makes a lot of nets to sell so this is like his little work area to make nets and have them ready for whenever he needs to go out and go fishing. And you got cheese crossbow there. This back bedroom is basically mom and dad's bedroom. But since mom and Sigla, the older daughter, has moved to the capital in order to find Sigla a suitable husband, so to speak, then it's basically become the male orphans living in one room. So the father and maybe Deidre or Vey sleep in this bed and then um, Tokli and some of the others sleep in these beds right here. And yeah, it's just kind of a mess. <laughs> but they make do and they're happy. As you can see, it's kind of a tight fit in there. Sometimes they do make beds out in here. A couple of kids do sleep on the couch and the chairs right in here too. And as you can see, there is a staircase right here. 
it's actually the cellar staircase and it is underneath the table they move the table off to get into the cellar now when there weren't any orphans or anything like that the table was a little bit more closer to the fire and a long way so that the cellar door and stairs were kind of open and maybe they had like a rug over it but now that they need so much space for the kids to run around and, and do their things, they've just moved the table over and they'll move the table back and forth if they need to get to the cellar. Because they have so many kids, they don't really have very much in the cellar now anyway. So there's not really a cause for them to have to go down there a lot. That is the first floor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and we're gonna create a new map. It's gonna be a fantasy battle map. I'm going to do another portrait and I'm going to show you how to do the second story or this yeah the second floor go over here and tap on the grid tool now you don't necessarily have to do this but I like having a grid so I can somewhat see straight lines <laughs> you know that's that's just me though and go back over here to the stamp tool and you can start choosing the stamps that you want to use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own wood, wood walls here. The second floor is not as big as the first floor. It's kind of offset and there is a little bit of an awning that comes off the back and provides like a little shed. So that's the reason why I'm kind of moving these inward just to show that there is like an awning that comes off. See, even with grid lines, I still can't make things straight. <laughs> but these are just basic wood walls that you can choose and lay down. Now there are different ones that you can use. I'm going to show you like the little brick size and then this one's a little bit bigger, but there's different ones that you can choose from in these stamps. I'm going to go back here to the stamps and I'm going to show you something. For each one of these that has a number beside it, you can hit show and it shows you the different ones that are pre-made that you can choose from. So like I just had that wood wall and it has seven in it. So I can show all seven and that's all the wood walls that there are that you can choose from. And then there's also this one right here too. If you wanted like a curved wall, then here you go. And there's plenty of options. It's not just what you see here. I'm also going to choose these stairs because we got to show where it goes down. going to go back to the stamp tool. I don't know why I clicked over there. <laughs> go me. All right. And as you can see, there's all kinds of different roofs and everything that you can do. I'm actually going to go down here and choose probably the slate roof. They were fairly well to do not too long ago. But now they're kind of struggling a little bit. See, again, straight line, still can't use straight line. <laughs> this one I'm going to make a little bit kind of offset because there is a little odd overhang that I mentioned in chapter one off of this backside. There we go. They have some hay and straw and stuff underneath this. So we're going to go back to the stamps. And as you can see, there's trees and plants that you can put around. There's fish and whatnot. There's also pieces of stone. And here is the furniture. Again, you can see that there's two different kinds of beds right here for the tavern set. There's different kinds of uh, chopped logs. You know, if you have a fireplace and you want to put logs right beside it, 
there's two different of these wooden chairs. There's one with arms and one without. And then there's also different plates as well. You can have plates with silverware beside it. You can have dirty plates. And there's also different kinds of rugs that you can have. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to put a rug right here. I'm going to go back to the stamps and go back to the stamps. Actually, I am going to close out and we're going to turn this bed. I'm going to move this one a little bit closer here. Okay, and going back to the stamp tool, also a chair right here and one right here. Go back into the select tool so you can turn it around. Woohoo! Okay, but this bedroom she shares with the girls. It's kind of a random storage room too. That table is absolutely huge. Gotta go back up to the tavern and get some stools. I'm gonna put one right here, right here, and at the end of these beds because that's usually where they are. And okay, like I said, Greta is a genius. She likes to build things. So what I'm going to do is have some knickknacks right here because this is Greta's bed. As you can see, there is just all kinds of junk in here. There's crystals, there's old mine carts, there's dwarven things, there's prison things, there's traps, there's ruins, there's different effects that you can add. Things that you can add for the sewers and ships and more ship things. There's nets and anchors and everything that you can add when you're building a ship. There's epic pieces as they call them. So there's like dragon bones that you can put around on the lawn, on the land. There's broken swords and here's some steampunky things. It's amazing the different things that they have. There's different temple things. There's things for to build a train or train tracks. Hey, there's a sink. <laughs> Not really the sink that I want though, but I can't use that. Oh well, okay. And there's the elven section as well. It's all pretty and greens and purples and blues. Let's go back up here. I already forgot what I was looking for because I saw the sink. <laughs> oh yeah, I was going to do another little table. One of these square ones right here. And then I'll go back and add some of these notes and some books to it. Now do you see the different colored books? There we go. Yeah, that is the girls' room. There's a lot more junk over in here and underneath the stairs that they have kind of collected over the years and that they use and need or that they have inherited. Some of these orphans got to keep some of their things from their former life. Others did not. So like I said, there's, there's a lot going on in this little bitty house. <laughs> I forgot windows. Imagine that. Whoa. Okay. So my mouse is going crazy. Bear with me here. There we go. All right. Windows. There's one over here underneath the staircase, which is really weird. One over here by the beds. Another one by the beds. I take the select tool and turn these two around. Again, can't do straight lines. Okay. Make sure to always save your progress. I'm gonna go back to my maps and as you can see, I've got these two set up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I know it wasn't very informative. I know I think I took a little bit more time to explain what I was doing in these other maps. So yeah, but Incarnate is an awesome, just amazing thing that you can have in your repertoire for building your world. And as you can see, a lot 
of people use it and a lot of people are far better at this than I am. <laughs> there of course are some paid tiers as well but free incarnate is just as good that's what I use as you can see some of these I do believe this person has some paid things going on or they're just really good at placing crystals I think those might be crystals so yeah I mean, just, just look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous and amazing. But this is another thing that you can do with the fantasy battle map. Create a little house right here. It looks like a little witch's house or necromancer's hut. That's what it's called. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do with this. You can build houses, you can build dungeons for your world or even your game if you want. And then of course there is also the full on map that you can do for your world that you can place in the front or back of your book and there's also ways that you can do towns and just different setups and this is really neat right here this took a lot a lot of time and I'm not exactly sure how they did this back here but make sure to check out some of these other artists right here maybe they have some videos up on how they did some of their maps and you can learn a lot more from them than you can from me <laughs> anyway i post videos every sunday and thursday they're on writing related things or my world work in progress relating things or something to that nature. I also do some videos on anxiety and depression and burnout and how to deal with those as a creative. I do live streams every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I also do live streams with Lauren and Nicole where we switch between our channels on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure to check those out and whenever they pop up, you know, set that reminder so maybe YouTube will actually <laughs> send you a reminder for those. Make sure to, to subscribe. If you like this, make sure to like it. And I want you to stay safe, stay happy, and stay creative. And I will see you next time.